Hey guys, Omni here. We are back with episode two of The Bad Batch. We had our 70 minute premiere Tuesday on Star Wars Day. Hope you all had a great fourth. Um, but today we're diving into episode two. And this one is back to the normal standard length, uh, roughly 26, 27 minutes. Uh, the total length, including credits, is about 31. So we're pretty much on par with how we were with the Clone Wars. The last episode picked up directly off the events of the final season of Clone Wars, even opening with the Clone Wars title as it burns away to reveal the Bad Batch logo. Love that touch. I love the surprise cameo, cameo in the beginning there with Depa Bilaba and Caleb Doom. I loved that little bit. Um, and, you know, I like that they grounded us in this moment. We still got to see their perspective on Order 66 being initiated and also giving us a little more backstory. I mean, we knew what happened, but we actually got to see it in this with Caleb and why he, I mean, we knew why, but obviously we got to experience his experience with what happened, how he saw Order 66, what turned him against the clones for good reasons in this moment. Um, I liked it. It was a nice little touch. It also gave us an emotional attachment. If, some, if it was some random Jedi general or something, someone else, it might not have had the same impact as it did. And I thought that was a really nice touch. Um, the Bad Batch in this, I thought they did a fantastic job rounding them out as characters a lot better than they did in the, their intro. And maybe that was because they were just new to the whole thing and their arc was relatively short. You know, we've got a taste of them before and now we're back and we got a little more intimate, especially because the tone shift was uh, drastic from then to now, especially with the state of the galaxy. Of course, Wrecker still keeps it kind of light. The banter in, 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 with the internal group is still there. Um, but we're seeing a more serious tone as it shifts. You feel the empire rising. You feel the shift in power to the dark side throughout the episode. And I really like that, especially since seemingly so all of them, thanks to their genetic mutations, are able to resist the order, the call from Sidious to turn against the Jedi. Uh, except for one of them, unfortunately, Crosshair, who we thought throughout the episode was just being a dick. And while he is a bit of a dick, uh, he was also getting those impulses. There was no guarantee that because of their mutations, they would all be immune. Uh, Tech mentioned this earlier in the episode, uh, but turns out uh, Crosshairs was minorly active and Tarkin found out about this when they were doing their tests on the group and ramped it up. So now Crosshair is full Imperial and is hunting his comrades. You know, I uh, mentioned in it that now they're down their sharpshooter. Fennec Shand is coming in to uh, kind of play into the show as well. So I'm wondering if she'll join the group and maybe fulfill that role because we know she's also an ex-Imperial sharpshooter. So we'll see how that whole thing pans out. Um, they're going to J-19, I think is what they said at the end of the episode. Um, I don't recall what that is. It's been a long time since I've watched all the episodes of Clone Wars, because I know I missed a couple of things throughout the episode, too, that a lot of people called out in the comments. And keep doing that, man, because, like, I, it's hard for me to keep up with half this stuff sometimes, man. I, as much as I love Star Wars, there's all these, like, encyclopedic details that, you know, just come into my brain and just leave just as quickly. So you guys are helping get me through a lot of that, and I really appreciate that. The mystery about Omega seems to be the primary focus of right now, a very Grogu-like thing that we got going on. Kamino and experimentation gone awry, another augmented uh, clone uh, that they had, the final clone that was at least made. They, we, st we still know that there's plenty gestating, uh, being grown, and I love that the Kaminoans have something to hide right now, especially now they know, they know that their deal with the Empire might not remain because like Tarkin said, it was like your deal, your contract was with the Republic. It no longer exists. And maybe we don't even need clones. We'll just start hiring people from farms. They'll protect the galaxy and then die to farmers. <laughs> um, it's a nice little bit. I, I like this whole touch, uh, this evolution. And I'm wondering how they're, where they'll go with the Kaminoans. And there's some hints in there. I'm not full on board, but there were some hints Namely, the empathy, like there's definitely an empath uh, ability that Omega has, at least with the clones. But I don't know if that's just specific to the clones, because she also knew Crosshair was on the other side of that door before it rose. 
Not saying she's force sensitive, but she also picked up the blaster for the first time in her life and shot it and got hit crosshair perfectly. Uh, don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It could be just genetics. It could be some programming she didn't know about. Who knows? But there's just a couple of things throughout the episode that make me wonder if what was done with her somehow links in with Grogu and maybe what Palpatine may have been trying to replicate down the line. Who knows? But I've been talking long enough for this. Let's go ahead and get ready. Remember, guys, the full-length unedited reactions available over on Patreon, or if you become a member here on the channel itself, gets you access to the same content that is available over there. So, guys, let's do this. Here we go. Cut and run. Done is the uh, open announcing. Well, this is a first sequence. Expecting every corner of the ship finally tied her up. Aww. Uh, she's curious. I'll give her that. Hunter, she's a child. We are coming up on Salukamai. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This has got to be like mind blowing considering she's only known the storms and the rushing sea of Camino. Aww. Whoa. What is this? That would be dead. So, this friend of yours, what's he doing all the way out here? Hiding. That's what deserters do. Staying off the radar is not our specialty. And you trust a deserter? Why not? We're all deserters now. <laughs> that is true. What are we looking at? <laughs> a booby trap. <laughs> Single trip wire. That's cute. Oh, <laughs> easy right now. Was that me? Y no. What do we have here? More clones who have lost their way. It's been a while, fellas. Rex told us about the clone troopers turning against the Jedi. You talked to Rex? When? Ooh. Well, he passed through yesterday. Oh, he go? so soon. Didn't ask. He was going on about some behavioral implant. He must mean the inhibitor chip. The Kaminoans implanted them in the clones to modify their behavior. Tech. You said the regs were programmed, but you never mentioned the chip. How else did you think it worked? <laughs> Mom, Dad! There's a ship outside! Shaya! Jack! Remember me? Uncle Uncle Rick. Rick. Aww. Come with us. <laughs> What's with the girl? She's a defective clone, like we are. The Kaminoans don't create without a purpose. You all have one, so what's hers? It doesn't matter. Battling droids was easy compared to raising a child. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea what you're in for. I'm heading into town to book us a transport off world. We can take you where you need to go. Nah, you're wanted men. It's too risky. <laughs> Aww. I caught it! Is he gonna try to leave her behind with them? Maybe for her own good or something? Troops should be pulling their forces, not securing a post. War is over. <laughs> It doesn't feel that way. They started seizing ships about a week ago. Military ships? All ships. They're tagging them inside that impound lot. The stall's up ahead. Let's book the shuttle before we're spotted. Mm. What do you want? <laughs> I need to book passage on the next shuttle out of here. The 
Those credits won't do you any good without a chain code. My what? Every citizen can exchange their imbalanced currency for imperial credits. Thanks to the generosity of the new Galactic Empire. Mm. The war is over. With peace comes opportunity and prosperity for all. <sighs> Getting off planet's gonna be harder than I thought. <laughs> nice one. Locking shit down for that control. I'll get it. It's past the fence. We'll get it later. Omega. Got it. Oh, hi. Omega. Gosh, I like these things so much. So cool. I mean, at this point, I think you should just go with them. Could have been killed easy she's not a soldier mm. <laughs> are you hurt all in all i would say that could have gone much worse <laughs> tech you think you could forge some chain codes yes do it we're getting cut sue and the kids on that shuttle <laughs> where's omega she wanted to stay on the ship. When you leave Salukamai, I want to make it a go with you. You two can give us something that, that we can't. It's ironic. Clones wanted names instead of numbers. Yet now people are signing up to be given numbers. It's ingenious. You could create a database to identify anyone in the galaxy. Glad you're impressed. <laughs> but where are we going to find the data for these chain codes hunter said they're tagging ships inside their impound facility you're suggesting we call the authorities and have them seize our ship that is exactly what i am saying <laughs> i guess if they think it's abandoned that just might work you did what <laughs> Ship impounded is not my idea of a solution. I have this under control. There's one big problem. Omega's on the ship. I think it's a good plan, Tick. So much for simple. <clears throat> what kind of ship is this anyway? Uh, looks like a modified Omicron class attack shuttle. It's a mess. <laughs> no wonder it was abandoned. I like that we're exploring more of the Empire like this, too. Like, seeing exactly how they initiated their lockdowns on the whole galaxy. Like, registering people's ships. Starting, like, the codes. The things that become relevant to people infiltrating things later. Uh, it's really it's really cool. Like, I'm sure some people probably just think it's boring or whatever, but I like the I, I like the world building of it. The encryption shouldn't be a problem. I wonder if they'll mention like what the significance of her like uh I don't know what you would call that that ornamental like pendant she had on her head before she's not wearing it anymore. I like her better without it, though. <laughs> Don't worry. I can slip through security unnoticed and deliver the discs to you momentarily. Omega. No chance you're getting past all them undetected. Where the discs go? And where's Omega? <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> You let her go by herself? <laughs> well, we didn't let her go. I'm on it. She ran off on her own. What is taking so long with the boot? Are you trying to get caught? I'm doing my best. You want to come out here and give it a try? Hey, who are you? I've got a situation to face. Uh-oh. 
gives her a better opportunity to wiggle through here until she bumps into this evil R2. <laughs> I love the fucking alarm noise on this thing. Probably should be screaming like that so late. Show me a chain coach, citizen. Sure, I got it right here. Oh, right. Must be in this hand. Oh no. Accidentally made five discs instead of four. You didn't tell her? Tell me what? The extra chain codes for you. So you can leave with Cut and Sue. Why? Did... Did I do something wrong? You need a family, kid. They're good people. They'll give you the life you deserve. But... I want to stay with you. It's... for your own good. He's gonna brute force it off of this damn ship. Responded to that. <laughs> Let's go. <sighs> yeah, we knew that was happening. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> I know I made a mistake and I have a lot to learn but you don't have to get rid of me this is where I want to be tell you the truth kid I guess I've got a lot to learn too if this is where you want to be then this is where you'll stay Aww. All right. That was a that was a cute little episode. Um I like the action. I I really what I liked about this episode the most is the world building. The uh seeing like the ground level, the local level, the rural level of the changes of the republic to the empire, you know why the credits stop working, what, how they transition that, how they start getting their fingers into everything, into controlling these systems, into restricting travel, uh, trade, all that, uh, with these registrations, getting people to sign up, getting people these numbers, identifiers, registering their ships, registering them themselves, not allowing them passage without having this number, you don't have the number you can't go anywhere if you can't don't have the number your money doesn't work here like suppressing the the communities the planets the population uh i like getting into that like their republic credits didn't work they didn't have chain codes so they couldn't buy anything they couldn't register a ship they couldn't get all that i, I like that whole thing and it's being forced it's not like you can just choose not to do it uh I mean, otherwise you just can't afford anything you'd have to rely on trade purely or growing your own resources. Uh, and it's likely that they would come and be like, Hey, uh, you gotta sign up or we'll kill you or we'll arrest you either. Or I liked all of that. I like seeing the effects of the empire. This is what I wanted, honestly, from the show. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people who are like, Oh, this episode is filler and boring. There's always those people, man. Uh, but I, I really like it. Maybe I'm just more in tune with the world than some. But, I mean, that's general people, man. Uh, I liked it a lot. Um, 
of course we do hunter was probably going to try to pawn off omega try to you know we've seen this thing a thousand times they're like oh I'm go well yeah it's better for you to leave with these people we are not safe blah 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 have the life you deserve but i want to be with you and then they're like i'm gonna be with you and they're like all right we're together <laughs> It's it's a tropey type of thing, but I, I I like it here. I like Omega. I like the I like how naive she is. I love. It's really I just love the concept too. The like the clones, the fact that they've never, especially her in particular, has never been off Camino. So like something as simple as dirt on this planet, like was awe inspiring to her. I like that whole little bit, and then not understanding games are fun and trying to figure that whole thing out. Um, she removed, like I said, the, that head ornament that she's been wearing since we first met her in this one. She never put it back on. I don't know what that symbol on it is. I don't recognize it. Um, but I, uh, I really like the direction that they're going with this. Um, Uh, let's see. What else? I don't know. Um, is there anything else? Wrecker was actually toned down a little bit in this episode. I liked seeing him actually relate with those kids of Cut. Um, I thought that was cute and very fitting since he's like the childlike mind of the team. I like seeing him be the one that's good with the kids. Because obviously they can relate. Um, I like seeing Omega not like having this confrontation with wildlife, which is also something that would be new to her. Uh, it's just like revealing the world in a way to us and to Omega. And I like that about it. And seeing how tech and uh, because I know some concern with some people was be how similar tech and Echo's roles would be on the team you know echo can hack things tech is the smart guy who can hack things too unlike tech in this way uh he's got a built-in scomp link he can communicate directly with technology so there's while he can replicate the things like through computing or remotely and stuff like that the in-person things can be handled by echo i don't know it's still very similar in the same way as, um because i know some people thought were well, uh, had been like, well, I think it would make more sense if like Echo or some, or Tech was the one that uh, became the Imperial dog and not Crosshair because it keeps the, because their roles are kind of overlapping a little bit. But I like how they kind of played together as like a, as a unit. Like they both contribute to their goals, to getting these things made and getting everybody out of there. Um, it was really fun. The action was all right. The action was not the, focus of the episode but it was a, this was another solid entry and you know after the last episode of course i expected us to take a little bit of a break and just kind of get a breather before we get back into anything action based again so i'm hoping hoping everybody's not too hard on this episode but we'll see we'll see so guys i don't really i honestly don't really have anything else to say about this episode so i'm going to pass this off to you guys sound off the comments let me know your thoughts down below we'll carry on the conversation after the video remember full unedited reactions available over on patreon if you become a member here on the channel a huge shout out to our patron legends mandy sherritt antoine rodriguez and ryan karen thank you guys so much for your support thank you everybody who's been joining over there we got a discord set up for you guys link is in the description i recommend you follow me there join we can chat about star wars marvel dc whatever um and yeah otherwise i will catch you guys in the next episode of Star Wars The Bad Batch. May the Force be with you, always. Take care, everybody.